Hi, this is Amaya from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we'll understand the difference between two key metrics, R squared versus adjusted R squared. Take a simple example. I write the equation y is equal to f of x. So the way to interpret this equation is y is a function of x. So let's say we are talking of a, a certain application from medical sciences. So let's say y is the patient diagnosis and x is the parameter which is going to decide what the patient diagnosis is going to be. So I can also say y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. So the changes in x are going to impact my diagnosis which is variable y. So let's say I fit a certain equation. Let's take a simple linear regression. I, after fitting the equation, I have something like y equal to ax plus bx plus c. So my model coefficients here are a, b and c. So as we know, whenever we are fitting something like a simple linear regression, we can use a technique, a popular technique called as OLS or ordinary least squares. So let's say I have the calculator for OLS ready and I have calculated the best fit values for A, B and C. So this is also what you imply from the line of best fit. Also, once we fit the model to the data, we would like to know how good the model has fit because that is going to determine my model accuracy. So let's say for this example, I get a R squared equal to 90%. So this is a, a good value for R squared. So the way to interpret this is more than 90 so this means that 90 percent of the variations uh, in my variable y are explained by my independent variable x so yes uh, by looking at this value of r squared any modeler would be happy that yes uh, the model has fit really good to data now let's say tomorrow i get hold of some additional research which says that the that the patient diagnosis which i am representing by variable y is dependent on a few more parameters. So let's say now y is a function of x1 through to x5. So let's say in place of just using one single parameter, this additional piece of research tells me that I should be using five variables in rather than one in order to determine what the diagnosis for a certain patient is going to be. So uh, I'll say fine, I'll just take this additional data and I may run a simple linear regression again. So I may have something like y equal to ax plus, so ax1 plus bx2 plus so on up till my constant term. Now base is this, if I again want to test what is the goodness of fit. I may again uh, calculate R squared and let's say R squared now comes out to be 92%. Just imagine a hypothetical number. So here if I compare, I am seeing an improvement in R squared. My earlier R squared was 90%. Now this R squared has moved to 92%. So if I look plainly at the R squared as the goodness of fit metric, then I may get a sense that yes, these additional uh, parameters which I am using as inputs to my model or as independent variables to my model are adding a significant amount of improvement because 2% is a, a good enough improvement for a model. However, this, uh, this is something which we have to see very, very carefully and uh, using R square only can be risky. So I'll tell you the reason why. And that's why we have this adjusted R square measured coming in. So generally, we have a tendency that whenever model is seeing such additional parameters, so here we had just one parameter x which we are using. Now we are using five parameters. So we can say that the model is seeing more amount of uh, independent variables or more independent data which is coming in. So model will exhibit a tendency to show a higher value of R squared. But that, that may not necessarily uh, tell us whether all of these five variables are equally adding value to our final result. So in that case, using a measure like adjusted R squared is always preferable because what adjusted R squared will do is uh, it will it will see that there are five variables which are coming in and it will allow this adjusted R square measure to be adjusted only by that quantum of 
which is explained by any kind of uh, additional value which these uh, f uh, which any of these five variables are adding because it may it may so happen that out of the five variables i am sending as inputs or independent variables let's say just two variables are adding a, an explanatory power to the model so in that case adjusted r square will only take into consideration these two variables uh, and it will not let the other three variables impact the value of the adjusted r square so that means we are correctly taking into consideration only two variables which are adding to the explanatory power of my model and we are not letting r squared uh, just drive the decision because if I use plain r squared naturally it will have a tendency to show a higher value because it is seeing more number of variables but adjusted r squared takes care of that and by using adjusted r squared we ensure that uh, we are only taking the impact of those variables which are adding to the explanatory power of my model. Therefore, whenever we fit uh, any of these models to a given data set, it's always good to have R squared and adjusted R squared calculated uh, as a part of our model so that we can analyze them and we can see uh, what the goodness of it fit is. And this is the main difference between R squared and adjusted R squared. And with these scripting tools like Python, calculating these parameters is very, very easy. So let's say I am using an OLS technique. So there is a model which you call a stats model, which is available inside Python. So if I run the stats model and so as the output of the model, I'll have a OLS summary, which is available. So that summary is going to have these values of R squared and adjusted R squared, which I can readily use for my analysis. Of course, that summary will have other parameters as well. So things like what are the coefficient values, what are the p values for individual coefficients and intercept terms, etc. Uh, in addition to that, we have these parameters like which explain us the goodness of fit. So that's how I mean, you can use these scripting tools very, very efficiently. And this makes calculation and the subsequent usage of these metrics very, very convenient. Thank you.